Wait, how did you? You so, had one uh, date. I had a I, date with uh, Jackie. Right, but and I got my cousin Myron. Uh, I said, "Will you take Jackie home?" That's the last thing I ever heard of Jackie. <laughs> During the dance, did you dance with both of them? Yeah. How did you do that? I don't know. I, I danced in one time. The most time, uh, 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 everybody stood around and did, 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 did listen to the band. Oh, packed people. My dad got the biggest kick out of it. We were two days. <laughs> well, that was the last of Jackie. I, I, I didn't see her again. She married a very fine uh, man. Uh, I went on in the service. And then I saw uh, later on uh, after the war in family. But, and uh, she got no it. <laughs> I'm sure. But uh, she liked me. I didn't care much for her. <laughs> She was pushy, you know. but it, anyway, uh, Mommy uh, invited me, and this is in 1940. Let's see, I got my citizenship in 41, May 41. Of, oh, uh, I somehow I got the dates mixed up, and uh, so when I realized uh, that I had to go, I had to leave the store and. Uh, that they had, had witnesses. So I called the superintendent of school, his, his son and I were good friends. He was one of the witnesses, and uh, uh, Henry, who was the best man at the wedding, I had the top, <laughs> went to the courthouse, and there was no trouble, but I almost forgot <laughs> the day. Uh, I don't know, uh, the, uh, I, I guess it was, it was been in 41, uh, Memorial Day. So this was very good. Uh, they had asked me to, to come and visit in, in Ripley. Well, uh, I, I never saw anything like this. I was uh, used to kosher meat, we just cooked to death. And here you know, they had the best food I've eaten. <laughs> and and uh, the neighbors, they sit out in the yard, they're both famous. I mean, things were so much. All, all I heard in St. Louis was business. The famous, all they talked about business. I got so sick of business anyway. So uh, anyway, we, I stayed there over Memorial Days, and we uh, kind of figured we were going to get married. So I, I went in the service in 41, and after I got I don't know, I got my dates mixed up. But anyway, I, because I went in the Army in uh, October 41. Did you get drafted or you just no, uh, knew I, you I, had? Uh, well, I was, at that time, before the war, you were drafted for 18 months. You had draft number. When you go, oh, you could sign up for 18 months and go right away. So I went to draft post and said, well, when is my number? It says, oh, sometime next February. It says, anyway, I can go now. I want to get out of the, I, I hated the work, the relatives too. You know, I wasn't getting anywhere. So, uh, I, 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 I enlisted for 18 months. In the States, five years. But anyway, we decided we want to get married. So my first furlough in the Army, May 10th. 1942, we married. My dad already had cancer, and I don't know whether he really couldn't make the trip. The family didn't want to make the trip. So anyway, we got married in St. Louis. Betty's grandmother, sister, and I don't know how her dad did it. They drove in, made the arrangement, got the rabbi, everything was ready. And all I had was $50. Where'd you get married? At the, Ch uh, at the Chase Hotel. Same place you had the dance. Yeah, that same place. That, that was forgotten by then. So anyway, uh, she had a friend in St. Louis that worked in that wholesale house with, and she was a maid of honor. And I will, uh, at that time, 
before the war, you could wear a, a white shirt and black tie. For uh, but after the war started, you you couldn't wear that. But I thought, my God, I'm not going to get married in a khaki shirt and khaki tie. So I put a white tie, put a black tie, and they're fine until we went to the Coronado Hotel and I checked in for the wedding night. And MP hit me a, a, a soldier, you are the uniform, you have to come with me. <laughs> it took a lot of persuasion to get, get not get arrested on the, the wedding night. So the next day, we uh, drove to St. Uh, we rode the train to Ripley, and they had a big reception. And I went, and uh, next door, a good friend of the family has changed my clothes. I laid on bed and went to sleep. <laughs> they finally got me to go. By that time, they were all feeling good. They all <laughs> and then the next day, we had to get, I only had a, had a 10 days furlough. It took two and a half days, almost two days to get there. We went to Dallas to, to meet the family in Dallas. We stayed there one night and then we went to Tucson. Is that where you were based, Tucson? Right. Uh, I was based in Davis Mountain Field. What was, uh, what was, what did they do there? What was your job? My job was in ordnance. At that time, uh, you, you load the bombs under the plane and, 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 and put it... Uh, so, were you in the Army Air Corps? Okay. And uh, uh, taping this, by the way, on, on October 14th, 2005. Okay, so uh, you, you uh, had... I was in Tucson, but I forgot to tell you, but from, after I got our basic training, I was going to Spokane, Washington. A seven-day trip on the train. Because, uh, 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 Both of you or just you? What? Both of you, Grandma and you, or just you? No, this is just me before, that was before we married. Oh, I see. I, I, I forgot that. Uh, and uh, for seven days, took the day. they weren't in any, any hurry. Whenever uh, time to eat, they would side track the train, stop and set up a kitchen. And then, they would, so then anyway, I was in Spokane, Washington on December the 7th, 1941. And uh, had a pass to go to town, and all of a sudden the MPs with uh, foghorns and all military personnel returned to the base at once. We didn't know what happened, so we went back and the war had started. Well, uh, they had uh, they thought the uh, Japanese probably would in, invade the West Coast and. So uh, we had to load the bombs. We didn't load them, you just put them on, under the plane. They, uh, you didn't put them inside. Uh, so we, they leave maybe at eight, nine o'clock at night. And we two, we were two. Then at four or five o'clock, they came. It just, they, they didn't have enough bombs to, to bring them back. They never did find it. They were supposed to, be on submarine patrol. So uh, early in the morning, here we go, unload them again. This went on day after day after day. Then uh, they never had any uh, uh, submarines on the coast. And I, all I remember is it was foggy, high flu. Uh, 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 I think I was there three weeks. And the fog never lifted, <laughs> but they flew. So uh, anyway, then. Uh, I went to Tucson, went supposed to train uh, some of the, how to put these scooters, uh, fuse them, uh, but you, 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 uh, they activate them on the plane if they drop them, they're not the bottom back. So that's how I got Tucson, and it was hot. It was so hot in Tucson, and I, I was said, I can't find another job. <laughs> so I, I started to, uh, that's before I was married. Uh, I started to, I designed a ordnance, uh, like a bomb, 
round bow with planes coming out and, and, uh, and the, the wings, uh, army wings, uh, in signal. Uh -huh. Every officer on the base, one on one. So uh, I start doing this. And uh, the night I was supposed to go to uh, St. Louis for the wedding, I was in, 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 in the, my, my plane left at midnight or something like that. I was in, in, the, in, in the captain's office and I hadn't finished this eagle behind his desk. It's ridiculous. But anyway, they all loved it. So he came in and said, you got to finish this before you leave. He went to the office, office the club and had a, quite a few drinks. He came back. Oh, this is beautiful. I tell you what. You, I'm making you a PFC. You're now a PFC. Oh, I couldn't wait to throw that stripe on. And uh, we got married. If you look at the wedding picture, I just uh, I got back from, from my furlough. Our first sergeant was a veteran of the First World War. He saw that. He said, where in the world gave you right to, to stripe me? <laughs> no, the captain had never turned it in, he was, he was drunk. I mean, he forgot it, but it, it, it was six months before I got to the <laughs> yeah, so, And then, uh, uh, in Tucson, they uh, uh, forgot which echo, uh, 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 the echo was going to put on the a, a, a musical for the the, the ladies, and so they had some producers that had been producers in Hollywood to write the script, and uh, they needed people to design and and uh, do the scenery. So another fellow and I, we got. Uh, oh, well, uh, by that time we were living in town. After I married, I didn't have to stay on the base. We couldn't live in town. So uh, uh, I got went to the University of Arizona, a uh, drama department. This uh, professor uh, 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 taught us how to change scenery on me. And we built it. Uh, I, I did two sets, and the other guy did, I don't know how many. Uh, I remember the, the, the final one I had at that time, uh, at the V for victory, you know, the, the, in Morse code, that, that, that did it, I don't know what it was. Anyway, at the final, and then, then they had some stuff in black, and, and uh, they, they was going to have the show in Tucson, and then they were going to travel all over the West Coast. It's so terrific. So <laughs> the morning of the of the uh, the show, uh, they called me from the base. The first time they said, "Come, we we're leaving. You report at once." I said, "I can't. I, I got to set up the stage." Said, "How about the stage? You come." <laughs> and, where you, where, and where were they going? Uh, oh, uh, I t tell you, who was the star? Gene Autry. <laughs> He had a uniform on, you, you never saw one like it. The, the tailor made, he would do back in the saddle again. That was it. Uh, hey, did you stay for the show or no? No, I didn't you, stay for sure. I was on my way to. Did you rehearse with him or meet him? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's when I met him. At, uh, Dressy, he only came for one rehearse. Hmm. Uh, uh, so right, so where did I, you go? I, that was several weeks I was in town. I never had to go out to base. It was great. It was, so then I went. Oh, Oklahoma City for the staging area to go to the uh, Africa or whatever. Anyway, they took. so uh, meanwhile I had applied for OCS and I passed the board. And the funny thing was, uh, you had to be uh, 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 examined to examine me, and I was 15 pounds overweight. So the the doctor says, I tell you what, I, it, it, it takes three days to get to get the Wasserman test, but if you lose the weight, I'll pass you. He told me what to eat, nothing <laughs> for three days. I starved myself. 
he went back out and think I lost 15 pounds when he passed me. So I, and then I passed the board for ordinance OCS. And uh, so that was in Oklahoma City. There was another fellow and I were left behind because we had passed the board for OCS. And they shipped to they Africa? They shipped to Africa in 1942. They, they, went, they went to Africa, Italy, I don't know where they ended up anyway. Uh, then I got a notice to come before the board again. It said, ordinance, uh, ordinance OCS is closed. They got too many officers. But uh, if, uh, we can send you to Fort Benning right now. In infantry OCS. I said, no, I don't think I want to come. Uh, so then what? So now you're, you're everybody right. else is shipped out and you're... Uh, the two of us were left behind because we had... We put the OCS. I, I, I didn't want to go to Fort Benning. That was I didn't think I liked the infantry. So anyway, uh, we from then on we do, uh, uh, I ended up in personnel, uh, uh, personnel sergeant of the company, and uh, uh, Sister Levy's or uh, Davis's brother was a, 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 a master sergeant in charge of finance. I never made a payroll. He taught me how to make a payroll. He, he, uh, you had to make it in... Wait, Sister Levy, he was working with you? No, he was in, on the base finance office. And he taught me... I, I never made a payroll. He, he, uh, he, uh, that was convenient. Uh, it, it's very, uh, it was very difficult because everything in the army is just uh, uh, like uh, 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 lieutenant is LT and everything is uh, in, in short and you could not make a typing error on the whole page. You couldn't erase because you had, you had carbon paper that was before I think seven copies. Uh, so anyway, uh, and I got, I got promoted. At that time, I was, I was a, 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 a staff sergeant. One day, I saw this thing come through about intelligence. But I look at it, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I filled it in. By that time, I knew how to make, how to uh, uh, write a uh, resume. And I said, what the hell? Uh, the the uh, lieutenant, I said, him, yeah, good. he signed it. Forgot about that. But meanwhile, uh, I got promoted to tech sergeant. Well, the highest rank in that personnel office was staff sergeant. So they had to find, after they promoted me, they had to find a job for me. So I was ordnance supply uh, sergeant, which uh, has... Uh, all motor parts, all, all, and all uh, guns and all, and, and your way out. Now, is this still the Army Air Corps? Yeah, this is, this is, uh, by this time I was in uh, Nebraska, in Grand Island, Nebraska. Now, is Grandma traveling with you well, all the time? Uh, except for the six months I spent in the Mojave Desert, in Mira, California, and couldn't, uh, there wasn't, uh, anything within 50 miles. And then there was a, a, a filling station and a saloon. So what year is this now? This is 1944. Okay, so my dad was born. Oh yeah, he was born in April of 43. Okay. He, he, was born, he was born, he uh, was born, well I was in Oklahoma City. You sent her back to Memphis? Oh yeah, she went home. No, I, I don't, maybe I was in Shreveport, I don't know, I was in so many places. So anyway, uh, our first sergeant of this company, and this is uh, not the same company that went overseas. This is this was a, what they call a air service group. The airplane mechanics and all, they, uh, and, and, and they worked on uh, different shifts. Some, somebody had to be on, the service, the planes, and all that. So anyway, I was at the at the uh, 
they were changing some ordnance officers. Every time they changed officers, he had taken inventory because he signed for an inventory. So that is on a, on a Saturday morning. And I, I, uh, I was out there and I, uh, I didn't have any transportation. I, was, I told him I would help him out. I, I, I took a bicycle on that day. I was out there while they called from headquarters. Come right away, come on to Washington, I want to see you. I said, I don't have transportation, I got a bicycle. Come on in. So I went, I went in. Uh, uh, our uh, commanding officer accompanied me in the base. Uh, the colonel there, the, the charge of the base, he shook my hands and said, Congratulations, and we were so proud of you. I said, What the hell are you he said, you're going to the counterintelligence school. When? Your plane leaves at 1 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> this was like 10 o'clock in the morning. Just we'll have transportation. I said, could I call my wife? <laughs> I called, I called uh, uh, mommy and I said, pack, uh, uh, pack, uh, pack my bag. You sell the car, we had, a, we had a Model A Ford we bought for three hundred dollars because at, at one time we had a place out in the country, you couldn't find one in town anyway. Sell the car she wanted to drive it up, I said, you're not gonna drive it. Where was the school? But Glen Island, Nebraska. The old car. But it, where was the school? The counterintelligence. Oh in uh uh Waynesburg, the new near Waynesboro. Pennsylvania and uh, <laughs> just and so anyway that, that was in uh, I don't know what uh, in 44 uh, maybe in I, I think I started school and said it was a 90 day uh, like OCS in a 90 day school so anyway she couldn't cut uh, she, she went home on the train she sold the car for $300, that's what we paid for it. <laughs> they, they stole it one night and they left it two, two blocks. <laughs> we couldn't, they couldn't take the key, key, key out that was frozen in there. So do you think, what, do you think that they put you in the school because you spoke German? I guess so, I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, most of this, uh, the qualification called for college graduate and uh, investigative experience, insurance uh, investigator. Uh, uh, no, nothing, nothing. Uh, I guess I need German speaking. So anyway, uh, there were uh, lieutenants, captains, uh, staff sergeants, uh, tech, I mean, tech sergeant, first sergeant, so anyway. Uh, take all you, everybody wear your same uniform, everybody sleep in the same dormitory, we got it, no more rank. You're Mr. from now on. So uh, they had, uh, you go to sc school from 8 until 12, and uh, you got one hour to do anything you want to do, uh, mail letters, Mail 